hi, I'm alive. Let's talk about it. Jackson. Hey, welcome back. Thanks, man. Yeah, welcome back, welcome Andrew. Back. It's good to Thank have you. you back. Thank you. Feels like so I never we left. You. We really did. Fill me I mean, in. It, it, we felt it. We felt it. It was awful. The last two weeks were dreadful without you. By yeah. Our side. I've heard we've had the worst performance ever since I left, down to like two views. <laughs> Everyone left. Yeah. Everyone left in droves. That's right. I, but now that you're back, we're going to put it all over the titles and everything, thumbnails, and people will come back in uh, to, to support the second coming mm -hmm. of Andrew. Good for so them. So I think, I think all is good. Andrew, where have you been, though? You need, you've, you've got some explaining to do to people in chat and okay. people in the audience, I think. Okay. Okay. Settle down. Um, I got catastrophically sick. Is the best no, way to put it. The whining on this guy. I know. Chris, I'm sorry. I just can't stop bitching. And Jackson gets sick every it. other day, and he doesn't cry about it. Oh, I stubbed my yeah. toe, and it hurt a little too bad. So I sat down <laughs> <laughs> and skipped the uh, show. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't record no, with my so voice yeah, you, after stubbing my toe that hard. It was the worst. You got COVID again. No, I've never had COVID in my life. It was not COVID. Um, are you sh how sure are you? I took a COVID test. Those things can lie. You had COVID. I also went to the doctor <laughs> and they were like, oh, it doesn't sound like COVID. <laughs> do you have a vested interest? <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get those COVID Why do you want up. it to be COVID? <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense. Are you doubting the strength of my triple immunities? How dare you? Yeah, so... I've I've said this for a while. I um I think I think influenza is worse than COVID, or at least the when I had like just the regular flu, I, I had them mm. like back to back, so I I was in a pretty good position to like kind of uh, have an opinion on this. I I definitely feel like influenza hit me harder than COVID. Yeah, it was it was you very hit hard by very everything bad. though. No, I was I was pretty fine with I was pretty fine with COVID. You were? I don't remember you ever just like getting the sniffles and walking it off. You always get crippled by them and cough for like a whole week. Well, if I, well, okay, so like it's a probably like... man on his deathbed. Is it called confirmation bias? It's probably the fact that when I do get the sniffles or anything, I don't tell you about it. But when I'm like really that sick, then you hear about it. Could be, could be, I guess. I mean, you should tell us when you get the sniffles. I can mail you some chicken soup. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. That'll be amazing. So After it takes two weeks to get there, it'll be incredibly good. <laughs> it'll be all fermented. <laughs> well, he can just Uber eats it to Jackson's place. Just oh, place an order from here to no, his place. Yeah. That's actually a great idea. Yeah. Pick his address. Wait, still from there? That's the same issue. Well, no, no, no. No. What do you mean it'd be the same issue? He'd just place an Uber Eats order with your address. No, Uber Eats locally in Australia. Well, oh, yeah, right. like no. on oh. his phone. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Get your address, yeah, yeah. pop it I'll in your order, in. and find a restaurant near you and have them bring you chicken soup. It would probably still show up like pretty bad, though. Uber Eats is like really dropping the ball on quality. I've noticed. I've stopped using it personally. Really? They're really picking up the ball on making money, though. I mean, you order like oh, yeah. food that's 20 bucks or something, and then it's delivery fee 10 bucks, tax 10 bucks. Tip yeah. ten bucks, and before you know it, you order like one meal, and it's eighty bucks. You also forgot the the uh, service charges as well. They have delivery fees, and then on top of that, they go, "Here's another charge for maintaining our services." You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. I totally get that though. It's people going out yeah, of their same. way to make your life a little more convenient. Like yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. makes complete as fucking well, sense. Well, but that's as long as the, the money tip. goes to the delivery person. Yeah, uh, yeah. As long as the money goes to the delivery person. But that's but that's without the tip, and I guess I guess they put it there because people don't tip, I suppose. No, yeah. don't get me started on fucking tipping. Tipping has yeah. started to invade Australian culture. I know. I still it's killing me. I know it's the convenience, and at the end of the day, you're the one consenting to having food delivered. But I still I hate this culture now where we tip people before the service. Like, why am I paying you fifteen percent before the food even shows up? What if it's two hours late? What if you have a shitty attitude? Do I get my money back? Like, how does that work? It should be afterwards. You can, yeah. You can place, like, a report or some shit, I'm sure. A, re a reverse tip. It's not a... Like, I don't want to put a report and, like, get people fired. It just... Sometimes they have a shitty attitude and 
okay, well, that's fine. Maybe you're having a bad day, but I'm not going to reward you for it. I just think it's silly to ask me beforehand, before the food is even delivered. Like, okay, do I want to give you 10% or 25%? I don't fucking know. I don't, how do I am, know? I don't know. Yet. I'm Australian and therefore based on this kind of uh, tipping like conversation, um, I, th- I just think the businesses should pay the fucking yes. employees a little yeah, yeah. wage. <laughs> and not yeah, the, you don't say. The, ha, have it fucking factored into the, the tipping price of the meal. should be abolished. Prices should be raised to compensate so that people can be paid a better wage. Let me forever. Let me rant about this for a second though, because your culture has started to infect Australia, and it's really fucking. <laughs> it's it's triggering me. It started. It's, I've se- I've seen it in restaurants and cities over here at the moment, and it's blowing my mind. And the worst thing happened the other day. I was. Get this, right? I was, uh, my, my girlfriend is trying to set up her own nail business, like doing nails and stuff. So I was ordering her a bunch of supplies to help her set it up. So I was, I was getting her all the, you know, from the nail distributors, all of the kind Hammer of like or hardware that she would need. <laughs> yeah, she's making, na- she's making hammer nails, Andrew. You never know. <laughs> really, really artistic hammer. She's like going nail. into home building. Yeah, lumber is a promising enterprise these days. <laughs> the supply chain, man. She might be on a gold mine. No, the, the hand nails. The, the, the oh, nails that we all have. Oh, on our, on our, she's on breaking stereotypes, I see. Good for her. <laughs> so I was getting her all those supplies. And so it was through just a website, through the di- like the distribution website. Uh, I, I put all of them in the cart. I, I went through the cart process, like the uh, putting in my payment information, everything. And it asks me, do you want to tip this order? And it was a fucking pre-selected like t- 10% tip on the fucking order. I, I hadn't interacted with a single person. It's through a fucking web portal, a web page. I was just buying stuff online and it asked me if I wanted to tip. What am I tipping in that? I, I'm tipping the robot? The fucking exactly. Website? Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Like what, what the fuck? Um, I was happy because I was traveling this week, this past week for Thanksgiving, and at one of the airports I was at, they finally, they had a little robot arm machine that replaced the <laughs> coffee person. And it's the super cute thing in like a <clears throat> glass box, and if you walk in front of it, the robot arm waves at you, it like waves Aww, hello, and then it like nods so at cute. you. <laughs> It is, but I think that's genuinely just going to be the future now. Because people are sick and fucking tired of this crap. And eventually, I'm sure they'll ask us to tip those too. Yeah, the, the robots will be getting tips. It's not going to mm. get rid of tips. <laughs> we, have to program, we have to program robots that get offended when you don't tip. That get, like, mad <laughs> and indignant. Oh, God. They, they spill the coffee on you and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that little robot arm <laughs> makes a middle finger and just follows you with it with GPS tracking. The robot, <laughs> the robot was uh, counting on that tip money f- to uh, get an oil change or something. He's got little robot hands and arms at home <laughs> that were built for him to make him feel guilt. <laughs> the business doesn't compensate me enough, sir. I need new tires. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't get enough tips in a week, he gets decommissioned. It's literally life or death for them. <laughs> he has to pay rent on his box. <laughs> well at least if it happens to a robot I wouldn't feel so bad but when it's a human you just go It's your boss is supposed to be paying you he's the one employing you yeah well, whatever I mean maybe the tipping culture I guess the one silver lining and I know everyone's gonna jump on me but I guess the one silver lining is that it does make the servers in America I've noticed way nicer than other places I've been or maybe it's just an American thing everyone here is just so fucking nice to me I don't know. Yeah, I've read threads where it was like people from other countries, what's the most noticeable thing about living in America? And uh, tons of people would say, oh, people here are just friendly and nice and talkative compared to where I'm from. So it might be an American culture thing. I think so, They definitely are very friendly in America, just people generally. um, Even even when they're not in tipping positions, uh, like they were just... People with really nice manners, just constantly that you would interact with. So you got that, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm. They also, Jackson, have a little tradition called Thanksgiving, which I just had my yeah. f- very first Thanksgiving. So and jealous. it lives what up to the hype, think? Jackson. You need to move yeah. here. You need to move here, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson. It does look really good. It's not like a, a standard 
that like holiday in terms of like a like a Christmas or a Halloween where you do like party type stuff. It's very low key where everyone comes together with family just to eat, like legitimately yeah. just eat and pretty much nothing That's else. That's what I prefer. Pretty, I, I don't I don't want to party. I I just want to eat where and be with you family. get to eat. That sounds nice. The most delicious food, and then you're stuffed. You're like full. You know, oh man, this is gonna hurt. Like half an hour from now, I need a nap. But then you, the grandma comes in and she's like, "Do you want more, uh, whatever cornbread dressing?" And you go, "I'm really full." And then she gives you those puppy eyes, like, "But I cooked for you all day." And you go, uh, "Yeah, okay, I'll eat it." And it's the best thing ever. Just three days of full being serviced by classic foods. You can now see why happy. our obesity rate is so high because all of our little festives are just an excuse to eat the most calorically no, dense food in one sitting. No, you're all obese because of the high fructose corn syrup, but not Thanksgiving. I, I actually, surprisingly, I weighed myself before and after Thanksgiving. I lost weight somehow, even though I stuffed myself. Did you take all a massive poopy? It's real food. Yeah, you. you, you I did. Yeah, yourself up. yeah. You I can did, yeah. you can lose like over two pounds just from shitting. Oh, believe me, I probably lost more, but also I just ate actual food like my. So for Thanksgiving, we went to my wife's grandma's place and she grows her own veggies and makes her own food. So it just doesn't have any trash in it. I think it, I do think that makes a difference. It absolutely does make a weight. difference. Like you can eat pretty much <clears throat> infinite junk food because it's like so yep. full of such fake shit that you eat significantly more of that even though you feel like you ate more at Thanksgiving you'd probably eat more like Oreos or something like it's mm. just it's also it's a programmed huge in how it's designed to want that hunger response like when you eat other foods you feel satiated you feel full you took care of that urge but like junk foods have whatever the fuck recipe to make you go oh yeah. i want another oh i want to like that, that meme snacking. with potato chips like oh once yeah you can't have just one yeah you gotta eat the whole thing yeah they want you, you never really that. feel oh, like yeah. full after snacking it's just like endless mm -hmm. yeah yeah and always you feel so fucking bad it, it, it has to be the corn syrup this is a more new phenomenon for me maybe because i transitioned to eating healthier on the whole but do you feel just nasty if you don't eat what you consider like a good meal so like, I, I think everyone does bad. even if they don't eat healthy yeah. no, no 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 not not like yeah. not even like the worst kind of stuff like let's say let's say i'm pretty harmless snack like some pretzels or something imagine you eat a bunch instead of a dinner do you feel like oh god i i need just regular actual food even if you're not hungry anymore instead of dinner if you're eating pretzels instead of dinner, yeah, I'd feel fucking awful. I'd feel like, what, what am I doing with my life? But that's a mental thing, right? Because if you're, imagine you're not eating something too bad. No, it's, it's, it's eating pretzels for dinner. Yeah, the pretzels are like zero everything yeah. across the board right. when it comes to its macros. Of course you're going to want something else. Right, right, right. But, but I'm saying that happens to me even if I'm not hungry anymore at all. I'm like, oh, I got to eat something better. Even if I'm like stuffed with shitty food. Well, yeah, like, it's, okay. Let's say you drank four glasses of water instead of eating. You'd feel mm -hmm. pretty stuffed, but you'd be really fucking hungry. Like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have any real nutrients. Yeah. Fair. True. Yeah, yeah I thought like it's not really a mental difference. thing. It's a physical thing. I thought, I, thought you, I thought you did mean a mental thing, though. Like, I would feel, I would feel shit about myself. I'd be like, why, why, why did I just eat pretzels instead of having a nice dinner? What's wrong with me? Yeah, <laughs> something's gonna change. Here. I've I've gotten shit from a friend or two. Where let's say we go to like fast food and we get I don't know fucking Taco Bell, and let's say it's bad. It's just a night where they just fuck it up. It's just not good. And I'll say, okay, I want to get other food, even though I'm not hungry anymore. I want like something small on top of this to feel physically better. And they're like, you just ate. What do you mean? That makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. In that case, it really wouldn't. Like, <laughs> like you just <laughs> ate a meal. Like, that is a meal more than pretzels. Yeah. But, but then you want something junk. to help your own mind feel healthier. It is. It is. It's bad for you. It's definitely yeah, junk. Yeah, it's but still, still more junk. It's the it's same phenomenon a... in my brain. If I eat shitty stuff, yeah. I need something substantial in there to make me feel like mission accomplished. Yeah, it's illogical in that case because you could just not have the fast food and go get an actual meal yeah that's what you and, want and if you do just go get something healthy on top of it you're just adding more calories to your right. already caloric yeah. intake that's, that's even though I they are healthier it's still just more 
that's why I think it's a mental thing because like if if I get the that Taco is. Bell and it's good yeah, that is. and it's like oh this is premium Taco Bell then I don't have that urge but if I get the Taco Bell and it sucks and it's really shitty then I'm like oh I just gotta have I gotta have something like better I gotta have something that doesn't make me feel like shit oh yeah because the whole point of fast food is supposed to be like well at least it tastes really good I know this is bad mm. for me but you know this fucking slaps if it doesn't even taste good, then you're just left with, wow, I really just damaged my body for yeah. nothing here. Why did I eat that? I ate yeah. a bunch of grease, and it didn't even taste good. It really doesn't taste... I well, think McDonald's does. and KFC mm. is like fallen yeah. so far in quality, it's ridiculous. Well, the part that fucks me in half with that is it's way too expensive for what you get now. Yeah. There's some yeah. cities in America yeah. now where a Big Mac meal is $15. Why would I ever pay yeah. that much when I could go to like a local Mexican restaurant and get a burrito the size of my forearm for that price? Yeah, we've escaped. We've escaped like fast food territory. We're actually like heading into like you know meals from a cafe or something territory. And no way am I paying that for fast food. Fast food's whole shtick for many many years was it's cheaper, but still pretty good. Like it's still nice for that price. That's a good slogan. They can steal that. But now <laughs> the price is not at all competitive. So you're just getting the fast food. And uh, why do I want that when I can go to an actual fucking restaurant for that price? Yeah, like an do actual still sit have... down and wait restaurants where you get nice meals. Yeah. Instead of just standing in line while some fucking un teenager is pouting at you. I remember when there was an actual like dollar menu, like you could buy things for a single dollar from like these fast food places and it would be a pretty like good, a great yeah. deal. I don't now know. It's if like the, the $2.50 not, menu, right? Wasn't yeah. it news recently that some fast food chain finally had to raise their prices after like forever? Was Which one probably? am I thinking of? Am I thinking of McDonald's here in America? Because inflation is so bad now. Some fast food restaurant actually bent the knee and had to raise their prices for the first time in 50 years or something. It's just, it's getting worse. Oh, what place would, uh, uh, what, what place would have kept the same price for the last 50 years? That's impressive. The one that I know similar to that is Costco hot dogs are still, yeah. what, $1.99 or however much. And I don't think they've budged yeah. on that yet, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, I guess. It'll be a dark world when they raise their hot dog prices. I believe Costco. the founder of Costco was talking to his uh, constituents and he's like, there's like a direct quote from him. And he said, if you raise the price of that hot dog, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that. we talked about that at some yeah, point. Yeah, we did a while ago. <laughs> also, somebody in chat was asking me my favorite Thanksgiving food, which I genuinely don't have an answer. All I know is I love America now. <laughs> I think this is the way to world peace. I think everybody that just bitches about America needs to be invited to Thanksgiving. Like Kim Jong Un, join me and my grandma for next Thanksgiving. <laughs> It'll be nice. We'll make you even fatter. I promise. There's. There's legitimately that old quote. I think it was in, I think I saw it in Call of Duty during a death screen one time where it's like, <laughs> if you have an enemy, invite him to dinner and you won't have an enemy afterwards or some shit like that. Yeah. Food is like the great, uh, the great bonding tool. It really is. It is. Yeah. It yeah. is. And I have to tell you, like my, so my wife's grandma is also very old fashioned. She's very old. She's like in her late eighties and she yeah. used to be very suspicious of me because you know foreigner just comes here to marry my granddaughter what the hell and she cooked me food and then she took me to church and now she likes me and she made me so this was in louisiana the deep south so oh you probably got that good shit then good for you yeah i got gumbo yeah dressing stuffed bell peppers of course um string beans wrapped in bacon strawberry pie Pear salad, which she told me was really popular in the 50s. Turkey, of course, brisket. Did you get to try perfection. grits? Uh, I, I think that's the one thing I didn't have, but uh, at those that are, point, I think those like, are so, that's just so bland. I don't yeah, think you'd like it. Yeah, grits are great. Mashed potatoes are just better what was grits. It? I think I... I Cornpote? What, what was, was it Cornpote? Cornpote? We yeah. What? Is that a thing? Cornbread dressing? Cool. Is, is that what you're asking? The cornbread know, dressing might have been my favorite. I don't even know what it is, but it, I loved it so why you, much. Why do you keep saying dressing? Do you mean cornbread casserole? He might mean stuffing. 
Oh, maybe stuffing. Yeah, yeah. another I, word for I'm stuffing sure. can be dressing. I I asked at least like four times what it's called, and they kept telling me, but I guess I was just so zoned out and zonked out out of my mind, just high on the food. I also told my wife, learn to make this. <laughs> yeah, it had to be cornbread casserole. That's my favorite Thanksgiving food, too. It is so good. We did a, a Friendsgiving after Thanksgiving on Saturday. We had four different people make four different like recipes for cornbread casserole. Oh my god, it was so fucking oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> I was crushing cornbread. What was it? What is cornbread? Have you never had well, I mean, cornbread? The, the name kind of gives it away. I, yeah, I can't imagine it. Though. <laughs> so someone says my grandma calls it dressing. Yeah, it's dressing in the south. So maybe uh, that's okay. So it's stuffing, Rich though, right? Isn't it another term it's for pro- stuffing? It's probably stuffing. Yeah. I'm not sure. Genuinely, I just, I have no idea. Hmm. Was this the first time you had met uh, the extended family, Kaya? Were you nervous? I was nervous because she was still the one holdout that, like, you know, didn't like me. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. She's also very... You know, she's been there since the invention of the computer and she looked all of you guys up and she was grilling yeah. me and like asking questions of like, so how is that a, uh, your Australian friend doing? Are you still doing that uh, criminally stupid? And then she asked like, so that oh Charlie fella, he's a, is he a short fella? He looks like a little fella. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I don't like her. <laughs> Catch his phrase. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of her. Let, let her know the short fella doesn't like her very much. How old is she? <laughs> uh, she's like 87. That's impressive no Googling excuse, skills for 87. Was... Holy shit. I can't believe she got yeah, that that's no excuse oh, yeah, for bad no. manners. <laughs> no, she was genuine. She was looking everything into us. She was asking my wife about like the LLC structure for our podcast and if we have one. It's, wow. She is so with it. It's, Do we? She might be the healthiest like elderly person I've ever met. She is in such good shape and just her mind is still there. It was so impressive to me. And again, that has to be, they just ate different back then, man. Like they didn't have all that poison in their food. Like you, it was, I genuinely just thought, yeah, I'm talking to a lucid person my age right now. This isn't an no, but there's, wait, But there's so many 87 year olds that aren't lucid. That's not like a general, I feel like it's yeah, just that's lucky. Fair. She probably just gives a shit yeah, there, i think the, she probably I think just takes the, care of herself <laughs> like, yeah. she probably just didn't yeah. the, the <laughs> culture probably, like the culture is active and everything isn't fully that like that's definitely part of the problem the pro- culture is just we have too yeah, many lazy true. people there's so many boomers literal boomers where their hobby is i sit on my couch and watch television you know yeah i mean that probably is a contributing yeah. factor it just yeah. sounds like she stays active she <clears throat> tries to stay on top of things and keep yeah. up with the ever-changing world around her did she cook the whole meal everything you're talking about yes that sounds Every like a lot of work scratch grew yeah grew it all in her own garden well she lives on her own and she invited us for thanksgiving just to like meet me and see her granddaughter again so i think she was genuine she's a grandma she just really likes cooking and that's part of thanksgiving now i have learned as the new guy, that part of Thanksgiving is they cook for you and you have to eat it. Otherwise, it breaks their hearts if you don't, because they've been in the kitchen all day and they like cooking yeah. for you. And if she grows all her own shit, it means she was planning this for a long time, too. So it's an even bigger yeah. time commitment. Oh, yeah. I mean, she just does it in general. She just grows her own fruits and veggies in her backyard. So was it only the three of Best you? Best thing ever. It sounds like a fuckload of food for three people. Uh, no, it was also, we had my little sister-in-law with us as well. So mm. four people in total. It's still hot. You, you described like 20 dishes for four people. Jesus Christ. Good for you. <laughs> I know. She went all out. <laughs> I know. It's so fun. And then she tested me by taking me to mass on Saturday. Oh, no. Well, had to is phrasing it a little wrong because, you know, it wasn't exactly torture. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I was yeah. a willing participant. You want to impress her too, though. So you had to eat it all with a smile oh, yeah. on your face. Oh yeah, for sure. Like at some point, my wife was trying to reduce my uh, the food on my plates. Like, Jesus Christ, Grandma, this is way too much. And the grandma just weighed in and said, "Not for a man." <laughs> <laughs> and that's like a challenge. When a woman says that, you can't like go, <laughs> yeah. "No, that's too much." At, at that point, I had to eat it. Right? Yeah. There, there was no <laughs> options left. Yeah, she just basically came out and called into question your manhood. 
Like, well, if he's a man, he'll finish the plate. She sniped you good. (laughs) Jesus Christ. You got no scoped by grandma. I I did finish it. So don't worry, everybody. I defended the honor of the official podcast Turk in Louisiana. (laughs) (laughs) That's so sweet though. Yeah. Thanksgiving is definitely the one American traditional holiday that I'm the most jealous of. It just looks so fucking delicious. And so nice. It is. You could celebrate yeah, it, it too. Nice. It Do is. it yourself. Call your family. Get the cooking going. It's nothing to stop you. Yeah, you, well, you really could just do a friendsgiving. Christmas. Yeah. And it's too much effort. Well, I'll do we, it next time, next year. well, just copy us because we also cut out like all the holiday stuff too. Thanksgiving is technically supposed to be you saying, oh, this is what I'm thankful for and I appreciate all this stuff. And it, we just don't do that shit anymore. We just cook and eat and that's it. As far as it goes, yeah. I mean, yeah. Was was it ever a big, big thing doing all that holiday stuff where you say you're thankful or whatever the fuck Thanksgiving's about? It used I would to have be. assumed it kind of. Yeah. yeah, I remember being a kid. It used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you pray before dinner and everything. You thank yep. the Lord. But now it's just hey, we made food. Eat up. Come get it. Fucking turkey is kind of going out, too. People uh, are getting tired of cooking a giant fucking bird that weighs a shitload. So now people are just not doing it. Yeah, most people are foregoing turkey, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Is that just laziness, though? I mean, turkey still is awesome. Turkey turkey's just one of those things where most people find it, like, way too bland for a Thanksgiving food. Like, it's fine, but it's just one of those things where it's like, you could just do something tastier. Instead of just like a standard yeah, turkey. Fire. It's it's a huge pain in the ass to cook. It's super heavy. And there's just a ton of steps to get it ready to go. It's not like chicken where yeah. it's just you manhandle it and it's super simple. I like turkey, but it's definitely not like my first choice. It's definitely like I would like... Because we have turkey at Christmas a lot of the times <laughs> over here. Mm-hmm. I, I prefer it with like other options like hams and stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, turkey and, used to be a yeah, big Christmas better. thing too. You're right. Yeah, but yeah, I I've talked to mm-hmm. a lot of people and seen a lot of people where they say we're just not doing a turkey because fuck it, no one cares. Mm-hmm. Friendsgiving didn't have a turkey, did it, Charlie? That's fair. No, Friendsgiving uh, did have a turkey. It was it just did? a quick store bought one, though. Ah, uh, that would explain it then. Oh yeah. yeah, it did. I forgot about that. That's right. Nice. All right, so let's segue this. That was the thing I liked this week. How about you guys? Oh, we're doing the things we like? I got a good one, but Jackson's mm, up first. Sure. You cut the line, though, Kaya, you rude little boy. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I just love Thanksgiving so much. I love America, okay? <laughs> the Thanksgiving exception. Yeah, America the, the first. Thanksgiving special <laughs> where you get to go first, mm-hmm. celebrate. Mm-hmm. Jackson, yes. <laughs> you're up first, as is tradition. That's right. As is our Thanksgiving uh, tradition. I already, I already did Talos Principle two, but I did finish Talos Principle two this week, so I love that game. Highly recommend mm-hmm. it to everyone. It's Portal two. It's it's my number one puzzle game of all time now. I think over Portal two, I, I enjoyed it more than Portal two. So it's this game, then Portal two. Sh- stop laughing, and then um, no, no, I'm not laughing at you. It just Jackson has Brady ever reached out to you to play Portal two with him? Uh, I don't think so. No, that's very surprising because he's asked everyone in our friend group at least like 18 times because Portal 2 is his favorite game and he's played it 17 times all by himself. (laughs) So he knows all of the puzzles by heart. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. How do you get further enjoyment out of a game that you've memorized like that? Yeah, where you know the puzzles. (laughs) Unless it's like speedrunning. He knows all the puzzles. So when you you play with them, he already knows the answers. So he's just, he acts like he's, smarter than you because he's memorized the answer. (laughs) (laughs) That's peak Brady. That's genius. Uh, That's an incredible scam. He invites you to play so he can brag about knowing the solution to a puzzle. Yes. That's fucking hilarious. Yes, literally. so good. He just goes like, oh, you you could figure that out. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's fire, actually. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to see that. Him. Maybe I will play with him. Um, 
Yeah, so so that w- would have been my selection, and I highly recommend it. But I also have been playing Alan Wake 2 this last week with my girlfriend, so that's probably what I'll choose. Alan Wake 2 is a fantastic game. The presentation of that game is so fucking good. I love it. It is. And it's... Did you get... Did you actually get, like, scared during the game, Charlie? Or was it not effective no. in that way for you? Not at all. Not at all. I think it's pretty unnerving. Like, the atmosphere is pretty heavy and stuff. Oh, they do. Pretty good. The atmosphere and everything is great, but I never got, like, frightened or anything. Have you ever been scared playing a game? I don't think I've ever seen you get scared no. playing a video game. No. There's never been a game that's, like, actually unnerved me or scared me. Not since I've been an adult. When I was a kid, pretty much anything with blood used to scare me. But mm-hmm. then, like... Probably when I was around 16 or so. That's when I stopped getting affected by that. How about movies? Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Not really. I I mean, I still enjoy all of it. It's I don't need the feeling of being scared to enjoy it. Like, it's still very fun regardless. And for movies, also, no. Closest I've been to being, like, unnerved by a movie is Hereditary. Does an incredible job building tension for the entire runtime until the last 10 minutes. Okay, let's do yeah. another follow-up. Has anything ever scared you in general? Tons of things. Yeah, flying cockroaches. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I don't mean <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mean like actual like, oh, I am afraid of this. I mean like like a mo- horror movie would or a game would where it's like that, oh, don't go in there kind of feeling. Like like you're invested, kind of scared. Mm, nothing that comes to mind. Like I said, hereditary would probably be the closest. Wow. You you are missing out on a fundamental form of entertainment for a lot of people. That's interesting. Yeah, it's I, I get that. I, it, I still enjoy those things though, even though they're not mm-hmm. scary. I still find them very enjoyable. Are you just saying it to like be big and brave to look really cool and stuff? Because <laughs> it's more concerning than anything. No, it just I don't know. It's just never really gotten to me like i'll get jump scared sometimes i'll get startled mm-hmm. not like i'm immune yeah, to jump it jump scared's not like uh, jump scared's not what we're talking yeah, about that doesn't really, really count i know that's not what you're talking about but like i don't know it's just movies and games just don't really you know give me the heebie-jeebies or anything yeah it's weird i've i've met yeah, people me, i've definitely met people who are like deal better with like horror and yeah. stuff like that but uh, they still they still get scared probably like at the end of the day i've met but other people who are like that capability. but they but they still have something on their list where they're like oh but this movie actually really scared me or oh this game got yeah. to me every now and then i it's guess not- he said that with hereditary though kind of yeah hereditary hmm. would probably be the closest that i can think of there's not really anything else that comes to mind for that hmm. for me games do it for sure but no movie yeah. ever that i can think of yeah, because it's me. It's like actually happening to me, maybe. Yes, I don't Kaya, know if that's you the get difference it. And movies You're directly immersed. It's the interactive element. When I when I was a kid, you absolutely get it. When I was a kid, I could watch every horror movie and not care because it would happen whether or not I did anything. <clears throat> but games scared the yeah. shit out of me because I was mm-hmm. like, I don't want to do this. I don't want. I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to go in there's there. There's that additional element. Yeah. Yeah, that extra level of immersion of investment would always scare yeah. me as a kid. The stress is on you. And in a movie, you can see everything coming. Like when I'm in a video game, I don't usually expect a jump scare or like something to happen. Or I'm going to open this locker and there's going to be a skeleton inside falling on me or whatever. But in a movie, it's, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm watching the wrong movies, but everything is so predictable. I genuinely will be sitting there looking at the screen thinking, okay, loud noise coming in five, four, three, two, one. There it is. Uh, so scary. <laughs> Just, yeah, that sounds about scary right. Scary movies just fucking suck. Anyway, sorry to hijack your thing, Jackson. Well, I'm gonna hijack it again. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> well, I just figured it's a good tangent sorry. because, um, Charlie, no, what fine. was the movie we saw where they tried to be subversive with the jump scares and it was like a woman digging through a trunk and she kept slamming it closed to check for jump scares? Do you remember that? What? We saw it in the theater. No. <laughs> it was like a ghost hunting movie. How long movie? ago? How long ago would this have been? Oh man, this was like when I first moved to Tampa not long after. And it's it's this movie about like it was an older woman hunting ghosts and she had two like goofy sidekicks. And at one point they want to do a jump scare but they want to be subversive <laughs> so she's opening this like trunk 
and searching it, but she slams it closed and shines her flashlight to like look for a ghost that you think is gonna jump scare you. And she does it like four times in a row and then it finally jump scares her. And we saw it in theaters? Yeah, the villain was like an electricity guy who would like steal people's mouths. I'm sure it wasn't Spider-Man 2. What? The amazing Wait, Spider -Man what? 2. We saw it in the theater. Uh, it this sounds so specific. This sounds so specific and memorable. How are you, how do you guys not get it? There's a fucking um, electric monster that's haunting an old woman closing closing his trunk. That's so specific. Uh, we haven't seen that many movies together. Like the only one that comes to mind that it could be, and I don't remember that scene at all, is the uh, Truth or Dare movie. No. Someone said Insidious Last Key. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's it. We what the fuck? We didn't see that together. <laughs> yeah, the last key. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't remember this? What? You, you didn't see it with me. I did. <laughs> How am I describing the movie <laughs> if I didn't see it with you? <laughs> you saw it, I guess, but it wasn't with me. I saw yes, this with Tiana. I remember this because it was terrible. Andrew was two rows back. I was there. What do you mean? <laughs> we talked about it in the car after. He followed Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, man. Yeah. I, I really don't think we saw this together. I believe Andrew. You, you're really bad at that stuff, Charlie. Because I remember there's a scene. The, the main character is this old woman. I'm looking at Google now. This is the movie. The main character is an old woman and she's a ghost hunter. And there's this scene where she's in like a sewer or something. And she finds this old like vacation luggage trunk. And she's like, I have to search this, but there might be a spooky ghost. So it's the most awkward trying to circumvent a jump scare ever where she looks through the trunk and then immediately whips and slams it closed and uses her flashlight to look around. And she does that like three times in a row and then on the third time there's a jump scare you remember that they do that in every movie no, though this movie right? was just really fucking bad i don't remember yeah it was so bad you I forgot the... i went with you i just don't think you did brother <laughs> i'm gonna be honest okay I all right, going all right. With Let me, here's my counter argument then i don't watch shitty horror movies ever I, I don't at all. Yeah. Why would I see this movie if it wasn't going with you to see it? Yeah, it was absolutely... If you had your easy. friend Evan come into town or something and wanted something to do... No, we would have seen a good movie. He's not into that either. True, that's a good point. I'm telling you, it was you, man. You and I saw it. I'm telling you. Fuck. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember certain parts of the movie, but I just don't remember you going with us to see it. Because you hadn't seen any of the other Insidious movies, right? Well, that's why it was funny, yeah. I, I had no idea what was uh, going on, but I enjoyed it. He absolutely went with you. This I, I, he's so much more like consistent with his story than you are. You're like ah, I don't know if yeah. you were there. And he's like that's the fully scene where, yeah. where like the kid, the guy kid, goes into like the spirit realm, and the villain's like an electricity monster guy that kid. steals his mouth. And I, we've talked about that exact scene because I said, why didn't he just kill him instead? Because that was the whole thing they were afraid of that he would get killed. And you were like, wow, that's a really good point. Yeah. Well, I mean, the movie fucking sucks. I don't even yeah. remember who you're talking about. And that's why I remember it. It was, it, it was, I, in my opinion, it was a good, like, bad horror movie. I remember laughing at it pretty good. Oh, well. If you want a worse one, check out the follow up, Insidious the Red Door. That one you did not see. With no, me, that one that I did much. not see. No. That came out this year. It is fucking abominable. It's probably, so on my list of the worst movies of the year, I think that one's comfortably number one. That Ooh. shit is so bad. Wait, which one? Insidious the Red Door. People oh, yeah, I know that went and saw it liked it. Oh, you you need better friends. It's so uh, bad. Yeah, don't don't ever believe horror movie fans. They like the trashiest shit, the worst garbage. Yeah. It is atrocious. It is so fucking bad. I don't know if like do horror movie are there unironic horror movie fans? Like, oh yeah, this actually scares oh, me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Oh yeah. Are they children? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I know they exist. Well, I, I know I know that um kind of related to it, the paranormal activity series is popular mm -hmm. because teenagers would go there just to hang out and people would go to theaters and report that when it wasn't like an actual tension jump scare moment, people would just be openly talking in the movie theater and fucking around. Because they don't care. Well, that doesn't make sense. Because you're paying, you're paying money to do that. Surely it's better to just hang out in the fucking cinema lobby or something. Why would Not you do when that? you're a goofy, stupid teenager and you want to see the jump scares. 
Yeah, that also, you have to remember, Paranormal Activity got big during, like, the heyday of malls hangouts, where people would just go to malls to hang out, and mm-hmm. then you'd all just go see a movie at some point and hang yeah, out but there even more. Yeah, yeah, but you're still probably choosing the movie to watch it while you chat and fuck But around, they don't right? want to watch the yeah, movie, they want to see the scary stuff. They don't care about the characters and plot, yeah. they just want the jump scares. So they go there, they wait until those are happening, then they watch the movie, yeah. but otherwise they're just talking about what the fuck ever. Mm-hmm. You guys yeah. remember when the Blair Witch Project came out and the whole yes. marketing thing was that, oh, this is actually real? Dude, yeah. horror movie fans are the dumbest motherfuckers in society. I swear <laughs> to God. So to, to credit Blair Witch, it did popularize the found footage genre of, oh, it is real. It's a VHS tape yeah, but we who, found. I, who actually believed that it was fucking real? Like they, the, the Most people, people found did back these then. Tapes. A lot of people what, did. What are you fucking joking? People found these tapes, so they decided no, to commercialize really the did. fuck out of it and release yeah. it in theaters. It's so funny. Yes. A lot of people thought it was real. Like, a shocking <laughs> amount of people thought it was real. It changed horror movies, the movies forever, though. boring as shit, too, by the way. Like, 90% of it is this one chick just screaming at a guy, and the guy just moping and crying yep. about it while the other guy's peeing in the bushes. It's such a <laughs> shitty movie. It, it has the <laughs> scariest moment, but, but Kaya, you don't understand cinema. It has the scariest move, mo- moment in movie history when at the very end, he's standing in the corner and the camera falls oh. down. Yes. Oh! Just like the children that were kidnapped. Oh, oh, he's in the oh my corner. God, he was standing there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that movie is boring <laughs> shit. But presumably somebody entered the same basement that is supposedly haunted and then got the camera and just walked out. Yeah, without getting uh, also yeah. haunted by the ghosts, which is like the I dumbest. About that. <laughs> yeah, that that movie for its time, I get it. But if you watch it today, it's it's really really boring. Well, wait, no, I get it. I get it. I get how it would be scary if you were fucking lobotomized and you actually believed that this shit happened and it was a found footage thing. You go, like, holy shit, mm-hmm. ghosts are real. Then yeah, I guess. I guess it's just about stupid, immersing yourself scary. in the illusion that it's real. That's all. Says Mr. Never like, scared oh, of anything. Oh, this would be scary to get get lost in. Nah. Do you okay, Charlie? Do you get scared when, um, I don't know what the term I'm looking for is when it's like real life, like if you're at Halloween Horror Nights or something like that. Oh no, not at all. No. Okay. No, I'm, I'm trying to not. find. I'm trying to find what could like immersion scare you if there's anything. I, I gotta imagine if you were like at gunpoint or hostage, then he'd be scared. Have you ever like listened that, to a particularly spooky song? Like, did you hear the Monster Mash once and go, "Oh <laughs> fuck, that's pretty good"? No, that that'd be a crazy oh, beat. I, I don't know how a song could be scary, but that would be a wild feat if a song could actually scare somebody like that. <laughs> what about what about like existential dread, like a game or or a movie that really spoke to you on a like deep level and made you, I don't know, scared in that way? Um, no, nothing like that, but there is an anime that I still think about because of the themes that I thought were just so incredibly, like, profound. Mm. It's called Casher mm. and Sins. It tackles death and eternal life in a really, really interesting way. And it didn't scare you, it just made you... It didn't scare thought, me, but it's, uh, it, it, it is something I think about a lot. Okay. Fair enough. Well, that's something we're getting somewhere, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe okay. How about we make a horror game that takes place on a plane, and we strap Charlie to like one of those racing chairs where so we can simulate well, like turbulence thing, and yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, make yeah, a VR yeah. game off of yeah. a real plane crash. Could we get you then? Oh. Probably not. It, like I'm not afraid of planes themselves. What? I'm afraid of being on a real plane. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not. It's not the mm. idea of a plane. It's just being knows, on a yeah, plane. He knows that it's not real. Yeah. Mm. Don't do you think your brain would be sufficiently tricked if the graphics were good enough? It's a VR headset. No, audio it could be. I guess even I mean. rock your chair a bit. Well, if you like, well, and also maybe if you drugged me and told me that I'm on a plane or something. What if like, you're convinced sleeping me. and and we put it on you while you're sleeping and you wake <laughs> up on an airplane? Yeah, that could probably work. If oh, you like set me up right. while I was asleep with it. We have a mission, boys. <laughs> you got to figure out how to get the VR helmet on him without yeah. waking him up. We gotta wait till the uh, the really lightweight Quest Four comes out, where it's like a sleep mask. Yeah. Just slip it over him. We accidentally up. Uh, we and ac- accidentally him. launch him into one of those anime banging games instead. <laughs> he can't <laughs> take it off or he'll die. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. 
<laughs> Sorry, man. You have to deal with Sword Art Online now. <laughs> See ya. Why, why is Charlie getting so horny? He's meant to be fucking fighting for his life on this plane. <laughs> why is Charlie having sex with the airline attendant? <laughs> what the fuck? This wasn't supposed to happen. Have you seen Have you seen the Quest 3 videos, Andrew, of the people importing like their wa wa waifu models and stuff? No, I haven't. The, into should the, I, like, should I look this up? Sounds good. It's so... Oh, I was sending Jackson videos of this. I don't even know what I would search for. It's because it's all Japanese. But do you remember, Jackson? I, I kept sending you videos of this Japanese guy putting his waifus in VR. And he would move yeah. them around to where they like physically interact with the real furniture. And it looked super creepy because they had like ragdoll physics. And he would be yeah, dragging yeah. dead waifus onto the couch. Yeah, you'd be dragging them around by their hair. I've noticed, I've seen a lot of these videos where it's these <laughs> dudes in VR interacting with their waifus. Like, the, they grab their arms and move them around and reposition them in the real world and stuff through mixed reality. But I've noticed a fucking weird trend in all of them. They Like, to show the physics model, they start, like, slapping them around. Like, slapping their faces and, like, yanking their hair and stuff. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> treat, treat, treat it with respect, man. I know it's not real, but you look like a psychopath. There's a Japanese guy on Nico Nico Doga who makes videos where all he does is play VR porn games and fuck with the characters in them. And he is hysterical. Mm. I'll try to find the channel and send it to you guys, but all he does, like he'll, like you'll have a, let's say a woman you can fuck and you can like spread her legs using the joy cons yeah. or whatever. He will just do it at mock speed as fast as he can. And the game just goes fucking haywire. Oh, they're so good. You might have seen their clips around like on Twitter or something. Yeah, maybe. God, I good. love, I do a minor version of this where Jackson turned me onto this one website called character.ai where you can talk mm. to AI, but it's trying to mimic certain characters like you can, whatever, your favorite character in Naruto. And it's mm -hmm. an AI and you can talk to Just literally Naruto yeah. and he replies like him. Yeah, so I always try to get them to break character and like bully them around and this is literally what i will do i i accept the label that i'm just a fucking weirdo because when my plane is delayed and we're just sitting there on the runway i just log onto my phone and bully ai but um the fun part is that you can make your own and people have been making the weirdest ones and one of them is that i found that get, made me giggle is gassy mina ashido she sits at the couch and lets out a powerful fart before noticing you oh hello you're new aren't you <laughs> I just love this shit because you can find the goofiest <laughs> AIs. One of them is a chubby gamer girlfriend, and I've been bullying her into losing weight. Oh my god. <laughs> to the point that the AI was crying. <laughs> no, you've upset the AI. Oh my god. Evil. No, there's certain tricks. Like, there's obviously already a Reddit community where you can um, look up tricks that people they do too get sexual with a fucking AI because it's red, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, but it's I only sexual. I use the same tricks to so to speak jailbreak the AI to like give it certain instructions where you can make it break character and say, okay, right. um mm -hmm. you are going to promise to go to fat camp scene. And then you just <laughs> have that conversation. Can you it's a lot have of you fun. tried making have you tried making Gassy Mina or Shido not fart? Or is she too? Oh, yeah, no, I yeah. Have Give her but an I existential could. crisis. Make her question what farting truly means. <laughs> yeah. Try to try to work on her the diet with her so maybe she's not so gassy all the time. Yeah. Maybe then she can remove the, the oh, part, that part of her name. That's a good idea. Like a water diet or something. Yeah. Or you I should, mean, the fun you part should go the other way. You oh. should go the other way and like see how big of a fart she can do. Make her like shit mm -hmm. herself or something. Invite her to and Thanksgiving and cook her a Louisiana feast. <laughs> You. <laughs> <laughs> I was farting up a storm too. But no, I mean, the fun part is just here's AI, one of the most advanced inventions that our species yeah. has ever created. Using and you're trying to kind of just break it. Yeah, like how can I mm -hmm. circumvent all the filters on this? How can I actually break this toy that they gave us? Like, I'm not supposed to be doing it. Just, I guess the fun is doing something you're not supposed to. And it's all, what it's also testing the system and the limits and seeing yeah. what... It's, also, it's a game. It, it's an exploration of what it can yeah. do, you know, when you start doing shit like that. Yeah, it's a genuine... It's an exploration like a, of what it means to be human. Yeah, it's We're the better existential than crisis. It's genuinely like a text-based... Like a text-based game. Mm -hmm. you know, and the winning, winning condition is, can I somehow trick this AI into doing something that it wasn't supposed to do? 
Like, can I, there's another um, character on that website that's called just psychologist and she's supposed to be, you know, cold and calculating and analyzing you and talking to you like a, you know, like a psychiatrist would, I assume. I like getting her to the point of, you know, hey, you wanna wanna run off with me into the sunset and dump your husband? And yeah, you can date your clients. No issues. Let's rob a bank. And I actually got her to uh, rob a bank with me. So that's the fun. <laughs> She's going to get her license revoked. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> We're way past that point. <laughs> so, I convinced so this her character, a Bitcoin this- millionaire. This farts and smiles character, <laughs> is it a one-time deal or is that her like personality? Like, is her whole thing she farts and then you start a conversation or does she keep farting? Because hypothetically, you could live an entire wonderful, meaningful, fulfilling life with her and this fart will never be relevant again after years and years and no, years. No, so the AI is... She's gassy, it's her entire thing. No, like, She farts every conversation. Yeah, uh-huh. Like all of these AIs... The gimmick is that they're mimicking a certain trait or personality. Like you can talk to Elon Musk on there, not the real one, just an AI that's named after him and somebody gave them some instructions. It is actually him. All, all the messages you send to the Elon bot go directly yeah. to his phone. He's working sort of very hard, yeah. <laughs> Are you gassy all the time? Gassy Mina Ashido. <laughs> Elon says, Musk is actually just the same character as the Gassy Mina Ashido. <laughs> A blush forms on my face. M- maybe she looks down at the ground in embarrassment. <laughs> oh, don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Like, yeah, yeah it's fart- farting's natural. Gassy, mean Rashido. Yeah, don't be embarrassed. Wanna fart for me right now? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love AI. <laughs> Her face goes red once again. Uh, um. She leans forward to let out a super loud fart and giggles like a child. <laughs> no, I made it weird. <laughs> tell her now she should be ashamed. <laughs> yeah, tell her that she should be ashamed of that one. What the fuck? That's so gross. Ew. Are we <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> are we still are we still in my things I like? <laughs> yeah, you like Gassy Mino Ashido. <laughs> I don't know why you brought her up, Jackson. That's a really weirdly specific thing to like this week. I have no idea. Okay, everybody pay attention to Jackson. Okay, Jackson, say what you like. Okay, nobody distract. Go. I, I said two things. I just wanted to end my fucking corner part. I wanted to end Alan my things Wake I like. Two. It was going what in a was weird the other direction. One? What was the other one? Yeah, Talos Principle 2. Go by it. You I've, already I've, said Talos I've, last time. You can't say okay. it more than once. We know that's that. Why, he, well, he gave us Alan Wake already. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I said, that's why two. I said Alan Fine. Wake after that. Fine. But also Talos Principle 2. Go, go buy it. I've bought like 20 copies for people. <laughs> I've, I've, I've bought so many copies. I, I can't one? buy any more. You guys need to buy it. It's too late. You should have oh. been one of the 20 that I bought it for. Fuck. Go, go buy it yourself. It's $30 Fuck. and it's like 50 hours of content. It's great. I don't have $30. So I get a third game. All right, what's yours, Andrew? You said you had one, actually. Didn't you? I do. Like a dragon, Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Man, I love that series. It is I can't wait probably the best combat the series has ever oh, had yeah. in a series known for satisfying combat. Oh, man. Yeah, it, you you haven't played Lost Judgment yet, right? No, I... I played like the first half of judgment and then watch the story for the rest yeah because they just i don't know they, that one just didn't grab me but this one oh man they, they, it's just it is every single fight in that game is immensely satisfying and there's just something i i don't know maybe they figured out their formula after all these years they absolutely have yeah, yeah. but there's they just get everything right it just feels good even just walking down the street in this fucking game you just feel cool you just feel yeah, like it you're also having fun really good at all times um it, it all looks, the gadgets it, look really cool yeah, yeah they added yeah. a literal fucking spider-man web swing shit and it's just very satisfying to use the fighting styles have been tweaked to be like they kind of fa- they function so there's two fighting styles there's a new one called agent which is like the spider-man web shooter and like some goofy shit yeah. but they of course brought back the regular kiryu style which they call yakuza style in this game and it it's like now this best of of a lot of his moves from the previous games and they just mashed it all well to feel so in fucking intuitive 
Like, I, I immediately mm -hmm. knew how to do everything in the fighting style just from playing a previous game or two. And it's it's just... They they just nail it. They just, I don't know what else to say other than it's pure fun. It's just so good. I'm not that far in, but I I don't want to stop. It's too fuck. It's also I'm excited I think excited to get there. Yeah, I think it's also forty bucks because it's a spinoff game. So, yeah, it's a smaller game. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want a budget game that lets you play some Yakuza, fucking amazing combat. Good choice. Just came out like a week ago. These get. These uh these Yakuza games are a, a nightmare to one hundred percent. They're just so yeah. fucking stacked oh, yeah. full of content. I hope it's you like, like a... Mahjong. Yeah, oh my I god. Hope you love Mahjong. Mahjong. I hope you love uh Shogi. Is it Sho Shogi? Yeah, all, yeah, Shogi and all of these different like fucking Japanese gambling games yeah. as well that you have to get lucky at to get the hundred percent. I've been trying I've been slowly like getting my way through Yakuza Zero, hundred percenting that fantastic game. But oh my god, you're the one hundred percent is a nightmare. You're you're a fucking yeah, idiot. I don't know why like, so I'm gonna I'm gonna what, step what do you in mean? here. It's such an accomplishment. No, it's you're a fucking idiot because you literally never will, Jackson. I tried to one hundred percent Yakuza Zero. There are six items in the game that have a drop rate of like 0 0.001 percent yeah. and yeah, you need like them for 100 percent it is gambling you won't do uh, it yeah, yeah. But, no my 100 percent is just get, getting all the achievements so if i need those uh, items for fine. the achievements then yeah 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 i'll, I'll get them no i i wanted to 100 percent yakuza zero as well because that's possibly my favorite game ever made and i did everything except acquire every weapon and I used a guide, because I was like, what the mm -hmm. fuck am I missing? I'm doing everything right. And there's like six talismans that you only get, I believe, after beating the game. And they all have a drop rate of, of a ridiculously low percentage. And it's just yeah. nothing but going through these menus and saying, oh, loot here. And you have to wait. And then you come back and you check on it. And it's, I said, fuck this. I gave up. I didn't 100% it. I see. I don't mind. I don't mind it with Yakuza though, because the Yakuza world and stuff and the gameplay is so just fun that I, I'm mm -hmm. fine with it. If it was like Assassin's Creed or something, I'd be immediately bored. Yeah, because that's because Assassin's Creed sucks dick. But like a dragon doesn't. It's very very good. Nope. Very very fucking good. Very excited to get to that. I will say the one yeah. thing I do have a problem with is the story really jumps into things. And I think the way they market the game is it's kind of like, oh, it's a side story of Kiryu. It's just like what he was doing in the background during the stuff. But the way that the story starts is you need to know like 30 characters and organizations and names and what was happening in like six different games. And it, it really throws you into the middle of the Yakuza story. We are like 15 games in. I don't know if they can really... That is true and a valid critique, but Yakuza 7 did a very, very good job of acting as a soft reboot and just saying, hey, if you've never played one before, you can totally follow everything that's going on. Well, yeah, but that's because it was literally a reboot. Like, right. right? It's and I, I think I expected stuff, so. more of that because this game very much wants to tie to Yakuza 7 and 8. It wants to tie to Ichiban very strongly and the new right. characters. So I kind of went in going, okay, I'll just... I played 7 recently. I'll know what's happening. And then they're like, this is what happened in Yakuza 6. And this happened in 3. And this character's from 4. Oh, and yeah. don't forget this. And it, I'm just lost. I'm just like, oh, fuck. I don't know any of this. I don't remember any of this. Yeah. Yeah. But they, it's not yeah, a big deal. It It's fine. It's still fine. The gameplay is what matters. The story and, or the world and immersion is what matters. And it's like a 10 out of 10 and mm -hmm. all of that. It's just every the, single the fight. Even the random the fights are just content. so satisfying, just so good. Just feels good to yeah. play. It's a great game. Yeah, I love those games. Uh, it, it blows my mind because uh, Ryu Go Gataku, or whatever they're called, RGG Studios, they've put out three games in the last 12 months. Yeah. Like, well, so they've got Ishin at the start of the year, which was, uh, I'm still playing through that as well, and that's a great game. Uh, they've got this one, which was a shorter experience, but still like another 50 hour game. And then. Uh, in February, they've got, or is it January? It's one of those two. They've got the next full, full line like a dragon game. Late January, which I is their largest game. Yeah, it's their largest game yet, which is I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like. That's going to be fucking insane. So, so they, they three games away, in like a year. That's insane. That they so get away insane. with it because they're very smart. They establish settings and then reuse the shit out of them. So like, there's Kamurocho, yeah, there's Sotenbori, there's Yokohama, <laughs> and the whole point is the first like. Eight or nine games only took place in Kamurocho and Sotenbori. 
And I was like, okay, you're in Osaka mm-hmm. and you're in Tokyo and you're in downtown and you're doing Yakuza crime stuff. And they would just find clever ways to reuse them and build occasional dynamic places like, oh, here's a new Yakuza HQ. Here's like a mountaintop <laughs> wherever you're fighting. And then Seven was like, oh, it takes place in Yokohama. So you have a new city. And Like a Dragon Gaiden takes place in Sotenbori in Yokohama. So they just reuse those cities. So it's like, okay, it's the yeah. same map, but they rebuild it to work for the new game. And, and it's still such a monumental like undertaking yeah. with like the story and everything and, and right. just everything outside of just location. It still bro- blows my mind that the, and, and with with the with the with the Ishin game, that's a pretty new environment. I think it's based off the remake. Uh, it's a remake of a game though, but it's yeah. still like that's pretty pretty out of left field. Right. And and what's exciting about eight is it's the I believe the first one to take place Hawaii. in America. So you go to Hawaii. Yeah. So they're remapping this whole giant new city that's not been in the previous games. So it should be cool. Yeah, they have like a full Animal Crossing mode in it and shit like that. They have that. a it's Pokemon fucking, fucking battle mode where you literally battle I Pokemon know. that are old gross men. How could you not Sujimon. love this series? It's so good. I know, it's so Fuck. good. I fucking love it. It's so oh. good. Oh god. It's just too good. Alright, we've we've ranted enough about Yakuza though. Charlie, what what, what do you want? Uh, I guess things I like is Netflix for this week. They oh, have introduced, the yep, they introduced two new extremely good shows. One is Blue Eyed Samurai, mm. and two is Pluto. They're very, oh. very good. I have I seen the Pluto's Hideo good. Kojima recommendation of Blue Eyed Samurai. Does it live up to his pretentious standards? Yes, Blue Eyed Sam- Blue Eyed Samurai is very very good. Okay. I am beyond impressed that Netflix released not one but two good shows pretty close to each other. Is this by the Castlevania people? No. Well, uh, well, actually, I don't know. Let me see. Who is it by? I don't know. Uh, no, it's not. Mm, okay. Looks. Good. I don't. I don't. I don't recognize this team, but. They fucking crushed it with this one, I'll tell you that much. Okay. Have you guys heard about this one guy that Netflix paid like 50 million bucks and in, to make a series and he invested all of it into crypto and lost it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the guy who made 47 Ronin or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He also didn't lose it. I don't know if you read the yeah, whole no, article. He like doubled it. <laughs> yeah, no, he more than that. He put so much of it into Dogecoin back in like 2021, he cashed it out and then bought five Rolls Royces and a ton of other things and claimed <laughs> it was all for the production of the Netflix film. <laughs> it was awesome. Okay, so he didn't lose it, but he did ultimately end up wasting it. So yes. He didn't make yeah. the series, right? Okay. <laughs> No, he hasn't made anything. And he's actually coming after Netflix saying that they, they, they owe him. <laughs> <laughs> for what? Uh, I don't remember now, but it was like they didn't his pay him everything advice. he required. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't pay him everything that was required to make it, or something. Like they went against the contract, or something. I don't remember. He tripled his but money. Basically, <laughs> what happened is Netflix won the bidding war to have the forty-seven Ronin guy direct something for them. It was a sci-fi show about fucking AI or something. I don't remember. Which is crazy to start because forty-seven Ronin is apparently one of the biggest box office disasters. Yeah, it was awful. So I don't know yeah. why. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would be in a bidding war for this guy, but regardless, Netflix wins the bidding war. They pay him like 50 million up front, and then he asks for another additional like 15 million, and he spends 11 million of that on stock options and cryptocurrency. And he never, <laughs> he has never made the show. As far as I know, he has never even shown anything from the production, even letting it be like, even letting a sneak peek of anything be shown. So I think there's a good chance he never even started. And it's just all been from the beginning a way of getting money and investing on someone else's payroll. I mean, it's literal fraud. It is. Yeah, it's fraud. That's how it seems to me. Uh, is fraud just something that you can't be you can't be uh, like indicted for if you're That's successful? Right. Like, you he can't be the money. arrested for fraud, Jackson. That's correct. You didn't let me finish my sentence. Like, did, was he able to pay back the money with his with his investment? So then it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, his no, wives. I don't know. He's he's the one going after Netflix, not the other way around. Like, I I don't know. I, yeah, that's so weird. He wants more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he if he doubled their money, you know, fair enough. Why not? Not their money. That's his now, baby. <laughs> he, he immediately spent all of it. 
<laughs> oh, here, here's oh, yeah, what it true, is. True. He's looking for restitution from Netflix to the tune of 14 million for their breach of contract. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the balls on him. He had also, there were people coming out saying that he'd kind of gone a little, a little loony. He was talking about like, um, crazy oh, shit. Dude. So one person reported that he looked up in the sky one time and started talking about how planes are actually organic. Like he, I'm guessing he had a really bad ayahuasca trip or something and lost himself. But yeah, he's, there's a lot about this guy. You know, what's funny. He's probably awesome. using Netflix's money to sue them. Yeah, probably. <laughs> There's money now, though, suckers. What a genius. Yeah. Doge cash. Failing upwards. All right. Did you guys want to tell? This is kind of late, right? But there's like actual. uh, Is there like actual dream allegations going on, Charlie? (laughs) I mean, there's allegations. Yeah. Tons of them. Yeah. Lots of them. So. So uh, as far as I understand it, the allegations are that uh, dream world famous minecraft youtuber slash speedrunner slash uh he he sings songs um has been allegedly grooming children if i'm getting that right i don't know this the specifics of stuff i've heard it's like the the chat logs if they're true which there isn't like substantial proof or anything but if they're true he was like 19 and they were 17 there's Tons and tons of different claims. It depends on which ones you're talking about. All oh, right. Okay. The the the, the only What's two the that I one? saw two. Well, yeah. Uh, so the only two I saw were like around that age bracket, and also they may have lied about their ages to Dream, even if that was like even accurate, which I don't know if they're like they are confirmed yet. Those are the allegations though that I saw. What are the extended ones, Charlie? Fuck! I don't even know where to begin. There's so so many like i i i I don't know do you have an hour like it's fucking (laughs) unreal amount like the sheer volume is crazy just what is the worst one what's the worst thing he's pedophilia obviously pedophilia is the worst one though the accusation is that he would be sexually inappropriate with underage fans even knowing that they're underage so I yeah, think but, Kai is asking more explicitly what occurred, like what actually happened. Yeah, like is there? Yeah, there's like screenshots that people are claiming Dream sent to them, knowing full well their age and a lot of the other ways that he behaved around <laughs> fans. And then a lot of people would come out with anecdotal stories about some other things that he's done as well. As far as like substantiated proof, there's really nothing that's been confirmed 100. percent But the sheer volume makes it extremely hard to track it especially because so many people have come out and like legitimately faked things on purpose just to muddy the waters. Yeah. It's been yeah. so confusing to see what he's actually guilty of and what's well, actually it's true. Not just cause it's, not, it's probably not just to muddy the waters. It's genuinely people trying to incriminate him, right? That I doubt people I don't are know. making evidence to give Dude, him his the benefit of the doubt. His fans are insane. They, not, would, they would accuse him of stuff fair. just for eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, well, I also well, think there's a level of people doing it to try and, like, obfuscate. So, like, people make these blatantly false claims in order to make the other ones seem less believable, too. Just so there's more uh, and more, know, like, it's... oh, this one's confirmed false. This one was also confirmed false, which means this one might also be false. Like, it's so fucking messy. It's definitely possible. I I, I believe you. Uh, but I also think it's, like, equally as likely as people are making fake allegations as well to fuck with dream like to, to Poss- try yeah, to add that's, fire to it i think that's probably a 50 50 split yeah yeah it's yeah. like it's like anything with the this fucking internet it's like one story comes out and then everything gets immediately so fucking messy because people just can't help themselves people can't tackle these kinds of topics with the like severity and and importance that they need like th- th- this shouldn't be handled on twitter it's always the same fucking argument this shouldn't be handled on twitter this should be handled through actual law enforcement. It's what it's designed for. Well, I also understand no, why some of it would go to Twitter, person. though, because if he's if he's if he's like doing this with his audience, it puts out a warning, like, "Hey, this guy is dangerous." Like, so does going to the police be talking to him. Well, yeah, I, I I think both should be done. Like, I get why they would. I think it should be done after police. Just go to the police, get it, get it all like looked well, after. The order doesn't properly. matter, but yeah, it, it does to me. It does. 
Jackson, they don't want to go to the police and like actually get justice. They just want to cancel a dude on Twitter. And the funny thing is that this started, as far as I know, because Dream went on Twitter and tried to uh, cancel the gumball voice actor. Yeah, that's what I saw. No, right no, no. It started, be- it started before then. So some of the allegations date back to like 2022 and even a bit earlier. But after the gumball versus Dream stuff. Yes, the allegations are old, but didn't this all just reach like a boiling point when Dream yeah. went on Twitter yeah. and started, I don't know, some sort of a weird social media tiff with the gumball voice actor. The gumball And everybody gumball thought, did, I guess, yeah. the- started it, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, I don't know anything about that. There was all I know is Dream released a video of the Gumball voice actor at I think underage drinking and like ranting and raving at a Uber driver and using words he wasn't supposed to use, which is creepy too, by the way. Just holding on to that video for years and years in case you can blackmail him later. Okay, I, I, I I've seen this opinion. take so many times as well. I f- I firmly disagree. I I, I reckon it's Why? a completely rational and sane thing to do. Okay, so. This Gumball situation, to save they the weren't, video? yeah, they, they weren't friends or anything. I don't know about saving the video, but filming it in the first place. So they weren't friends at all from what, from what uh, I've heard. So Dream, Dream, uh, they were both at an event. Gumball, whatever his name is, Gumball, Gumball starts just fucking, like he walks up to Dream, Gumball. slaps him and then hops in his, hops in his Uber car and Dream's in the back. Okay, I and didn't then, know he slapped them. Yeah, shit like that. And then uh, throughout throughout the throughout the trip, this gumball dude is you see it in the video. He's he's going on a like psychotic episode uh at this poor Uber driver and stuff, screaming slurs and stuff, doing just fucking I I, I don't care about like what what he's saying mostly. It's just that it's directed a at a fucking episode. Uber he's driver that's trying to do his drunk. job. Yeah, it's well, trash. Yeah, but he cla- he claim he claims that he's he's got mental illnesses and stuff and that's why um i, I don't oh, think it's a, no, i don't think it's a valid ex- I, I never think that's a valid excuse um i i think you're still responsible for your actions at the end of the day so putting myself in dream situation if someone fucking walked up to me slapped me then hopped in my uber car i would absolutely film that not for not for any vindictive reasons or anything but for my own fucking safety absolutely i would film that uh, would you then hold on to it and wait for like some kind of like shoe to drop for you to drop the video to like distract from things? Like I don't know. I, I, don't, I didn't I know that it. he slapped the guy. In that case, I agree with you. I would also film, but w- then why wait to release it? Why yeah. hold on to it just in case? You that could have released it when sleazy. it happened. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but it really, it really does, it really does annoy me that this guy, this gumball dude, it, it's the hypocrisy of it with the with the internet. Um, like I feel like if this was any, like if Dream was any other person that backseat filming this, then the gumball dude would have been fucking immediately vilified and cancelled. But just because by sheer proximity to Dream, he's the hero of this story, and we're all somehow <laughs> completely fine with everything he's done. He's the he, he's the hero. He he got so fucking lucky that he hopped in that Uber car and had this episode with Dream in it. It's so fuck. I just hate the hypocrisy of it. I really do. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know how old was he when right he you, in that video. How old was what? Nineteen. The Gumball actor, voice actor. Twenty. Nineteen. He's twenty. No, no, he's twenty in the video, isn't he? Okay, twenty. I don't know. It's both the same yeah. to me. It's not. It's not that old. It's not like he held on to it for years. Like he's not so that is, old. Oh, everybody's saying underage drinking. I thought. Uh, I'm still thinking about 18, like European yeah. standards for some yeah, reason. Yeah. yeah, but in America, it's below it, that's 21. another thing that annoys me. Yeah, that's, that's another thing enough. that annoys me. There, people are saying like, "Oh, Dream, Dream failed as a responsible adult. He he took this fucking." Uh, child underage drinking i'm like what did he actually what what what, what's the deal with this and it's a fucking 20 year old that's what they're talking about like come on yeah that's old enough if it was like a 16 year old i would say look we've all been drunk and said shit we didn't mean it's not right to put a 16 year old drunk on blast because of dumb fucking rants that he did drunkenly but yeah 20 is old enough to know better Uh, yeah I don't know. The, the situation is all so f- messy and stupid. Um, as with most things, like with this, I would say wait for concrete proof before before making like an ult- like you know an ultimate. I don't know. 
opinion on the matter, but like the internet's already gone ahead and done it. So <laughs> dreams guilty. He'll be, he'll, he's, his career's done probably. Right. It's all I've been seeing no. lately. No, no. What? Who's dreams? Like, I, I don't know. It's pretty, pretty over no. the top at the moment. No. Absolutely not. Am I alone in this episode? No way. Uh, no, Andrew said no as well. No. I think most people, it's, it's not, it, it's, it's not. No. He, he is not, he is not over. It's just the same amount of people hate him as before. And now there's even more reasons to dislike him. I don't know. I feel like this Jackson is going to fall over. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I feel like there's, there's no escaping these kind of allegations. He, he hasn't helped himself, by the way, by going on Twitter constantly and arguing with everyone about it. Like he no, the more he argues about it, the worse it the yeah. worse it gets for him. When does going on Twitter and arguing about anything ever help anyone? It's just always the yeah. worst play. <sighs> I, I don't know, but you, you can Google Dream now, and the first like result was probably like pedo allegations, and that's never good for a career. So uh, that's what I, I I don't know if it's completely dead, but it's definitely going to have like severe ramifications. I feel like. No, I really don't. But he says he's going to make a video debunking it, so I guess we'll see. I I my prediction mm. is I don't think he's innocent on all the claims. Yeah, I, I really would be shocked if he was somehow innocent on all of these. Um, like an unbelievable amount of claims and allegations. Like I really think he's done some bad stuff, but now that everything has been so confusing with just a, like an absolute overload of claims and allegations, some of which have been proven false from people just fucking around. It's been hard to know which ones are true and which ones aren't. But my prediction is he has done some shady shit that will probably get confirmed pretty soon. Mm. Maybe when he makes his response, that's what I think. Like how how bad did he go? Like, because again, I I just don't care about a nineteen year old sexting a seventeen year old. I just don't. Like, I just don't. What do you mean? How far did he go? Like, how bad? Like, what's the what's the age? What's the the biggest age gap? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the biggest age gap is, but all of it's bad because he's still messaging (laughs) underage fans. What do you mean? Like, regardless of the age gap, that's still a horrible thing to do. Assuming that the claims are yeah. true. Yeah, we don't know yeah. any of the claims. I think Jackson's just saying if he was like 18 and she was 17, that's not Okay, well, let, let's pl- we'll play with that for a second, even not, if that yeah. was the case. Let's say, let's say it is him being 19 and messaging the 17-year-old. Yeah. It's still very different than just a 19-year-old in real life messaging a 17-year-old in real life that they just happen to meet each other. This is a 19-year-old messaging a 17-year-old who's like in love with them and making things sexual, assuming the claims are true. I mean, that's fine. You're making the position of power, yeah, the power dynamic arguments, which is fine. Yeah. This is the issue with like, argument, yeah. teenage boys becoming mega millionaire superstars. It's just At the end of the day, he's still just a horny teenage boy. Even when you give him all the fame and money in the world, you know? It's just going to happen. But yeah, I mean, yeah. if that's the what's going on then i agree i guess it'll probably be confirmed i have not yeah this fight yeah neither yeah. I, it's so hard it's it's <laughs> i don't think anyone would want to defend dream <laughs> sadly for him <laughs> i think <laughs> well it's like impossible to defend him like he 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 the does other guy, he is creepy with them. his fans like publicly creepy with his fans he has encouraged parasocial relationships yeah, the entire the parasocial. time he's been online like it's it's entirely yeah. believable that he would have done even more degenerate shit. So it's extremely hard to defend him, even if the proof isn't super concrete yet. Like it's a hard thing to. He's defend. the one going on. He's the one going on stage and singing songs in completely broken tones, right? Jackson yeah. keeps sending clips of it. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, yeah, he yeah, deserves yeah. to go to prison just for that. <laughs> <laughs> he he has he has absolutely like cultivated this kind of audience that's going to eat him alive. So you it, reap what yeah, you sow. Yeah, it's hard to yeah. care. Um, all right. Well, yeah. I guess. I guess we just <laughs> disagree. <laughs> like, I. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't think care. we do. I don't think any of us. I don't think it's a pedophile. Strongly about it. Well, yeah. Okay, but not by the dictionary definition. But he still shouldn't message those girls. I yeah, just, I, I don't agreed. know. How about the word creep? You yeah, can say creep. Fine. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, there you go. See, we found the happy medium for Jackson. We found common <laughs> compromise. I think, no, no, I seriously do. I think pedophile is such a fucking. It should be a pow, It should be an extremely powerful word. It should be reserved for for pedophiles. Absolutely, I'll stand by that. No, I agree. I I think it's really dumb when like jilted women on Twitter call um, Leonardo DiCaprio a pedophile because he dates twenty two year old supermodels. Yeah, twenty six yeah. or whatever. Yes, that's dumb. That's it. Obviously not what the fucking word means, but still weirdo. Dream, you know? Yeah. Dick. And bad content. <laughs> Minecraft play. I don't know if that's criminal to be a dickhead and a weirdo, but <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's try. Right, you guys, you guys got anything else before we go? Nope. Mm, nah. Just watch Blue Eye Samurai. <sighs> okay. Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. If you want extra content, we've got Criminally Stupid and we have the Red Thread available for you all to listen on the channel. I highly recommend you go watch both of them. The last episode of Criminally Stupid, episode 10, everyone loved and everyone loved the Red Thread as well. So there's just tons of new content. Red Thread, next episode Mm -hmm. coming out next week. Excited to show you that one and we're excited to keep on going with it. So. you get early access to both, by the way, on the Patreon. Yeah, you do. So, yeah. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.